Hi everyone. This is going to be a walkthrough of a pigeon with particularly nicely filled veins. So we can see those venous structures much more easily than on uh, the original demo pigeon. Um, this is one of the um, students' uh, pigeons and they have so gracefully allowed us to do this. No, <laughs> we didn't ask. That's a lie. <laughs> we still that's that's a lie. Just doing it. So we're going to go on the pigeon's left side just because that is closest to me. Um, Coming off of that aortic trunk, we have two branches that head straight out laterally, at least they do right now because of a uh, stretching. Um, this is the brachiocephalic artery. So coming off of a brachiocephalic artery, we have um, arteries going toward the head and arteries going toward the arm. Uh, so this one going toward the head is the common carotid artery. So coming off of that common carotid artery, we have two branches the external carotid artery, which is diving down uh, here, going toward the um, dorsal side of that neck. And the internal carotid artery goes down in between these muscles and travels up the neck toward the brain. And those are the only ones uh, you need to know as far as the arteries on the neck. The other one is the external jugular vein. All right, back down to that juncture where that common carotid joins up with the brachiocephalic artery. So now that we have lost our common carotid, our head-directed um, blood, we, this is now the subclavian artery, and below that we have a subclavian vein. I should also point out um, the cranial vena cava is actually right here. Yeah, it's right there. And then below that, uh, where that external jugular vein branches off, we have the subclavian vein. Subclavian artery, oops, there. Subclavian vein, right here. It can be kind of hard to see because that external jugular vein is branching off beneath the subclavian artery. And for our purposes, we're um, defining the end of the subclavian artery by where this artery branches off. This is the scapular artery. And beyond, the point where the scapular artery branches off, we have the axillary artery followed by a paired axillary vein. Is what can be kind of distracting the pigeon um, is this rather large pectoral artery and vein going to the um, supracorcoideus and the pectoralis muscles. Uh, so what we're following for the axillary artery and vein is here and going out this way toward the arm and that vein is just below going out toward that arm. And then once we get onto the arm, we can flip this over. Oh dear. Uh, you have the brachial artery and vein continuing onto the arm. So now uh, we're gonna move down to the abdominal area, but before, before we do that, I, want to do, I do wanna point out the um, esophagus, which has this outpocketing of the crop. We follow that esophagus down. It's gonna dive beneath our heart and we can lift this up that esophagus empties into the proventriculus, which is a slight swelling. The gizzard, which is a very hard structure. We also have the spleen lying dorsal to that gizzard. The gizzard empties out into the intestine. Uh, we're not gonna go in much more detail. Do you know that they have a large and small intestine, but we can't necessarily see the distinction between them. Um, and then we have the pancreas which has two lobes, similar to the shark. There's a dorsal and a ventral lobe um, as it kind of fits in between some of those loops of the intestine. And then last but not least on the intestine, we have these two little doohickeys. Those are the cica. Um, you can see one and the other one might be kind of hard to see. Um, and this particular pigeon is a male and we can tell because we can see this very tiny little testis and the other one is right over here. Uh, so those are the testes in this probably non-breeding season male or maybe like an immature male. Um, in some that are in the breeding season, the testes get to be very large. Uh, in the female, they have a large, uh, well, sort of large, it's like an ovary. It looks like a cluster of grapes. And then there's a very large oviduct that heads out to the cloaca. Um, and sometimes you'll find eggs within that uh, that are were, were ready to be laid, not are ready to be laid because uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't have to explain that one. <laughs> All right, so now let's take a look at the vessels of the abdominal region of the pigeon. 
So we'll start with the arteries. The first one coming down from that heart, directly from the heart, is the dorsal aorta, or aorta, or descending aorta, or posterior aorta. Any of these is fine. So the dorsal aorta comes directly from the heart and is going, uh, it splits off um, very similarly uh, as in the rabbit. This is the celiac trunk going toward the proventriculus, the gizzard, the spleen, all of this um, really uh, cranial portion of the digestive tract. And then this one is the cranial mesenteric artery going toward the intestine, um, basically identical to in the rabbit. Uh, the dorsal aorta splits into external iliac arteries that go toward the leg. So you can see that external iliac artery right here un goes underneath this kidney. And it goes out to the leg where once it passes through this abdominal wall, it becomes the femoral artery. Also sends off a little offshoot called the pubic artery. It's not on your exam, but it is uh, something that you might, you know, you'll see it. Uh, so we do want you to, to just be aware. It's something you might see, but you don't have to know. This next, um, branch coming off of that dorsal aorta, splitting off of it, is the ischiatic artery, going toward the ischium, go figure. Crazy, I know. Then we have more dorsal aorta, which then splits into internal iliac arteries. Those are here. Now let's go over the veins of the abdominal region of the pigeon. So this major vein is the caudal vena cava, or posterior vena cava. That caudal vena cava splits into common iliac veins that go down either side and uh, had then that common iliac vein will then split once again um, into an external iliac vein, goes out toward the leg. Once it passes through that abdominal wall, just like the artery, it becomes the um, femoral vein. There is some branching um, once you get out here. Don't worry about learning what the branching is. We're not gonna test you on that. All right. So looking at the medial thigh of the pigeon, this is the femoral artery and vein. Um, the other portion of that common iliac vein that heads down, heads caudally, is the renal vein. There are gonna be three renal veins we're not having to identify or distinguish between them. Um, but just be aware, because there are three lobes of this kidney, they have three renal veins. Next, as we go down, this is the renal portal vein. And we can't see it here, um, if we dig down a little bit, we would be able to see it, but we're not going to do that because this is a student's. Um, this is the inter internal iliac vein going up alongside that internal iliac artery. And once you get beyond that internal iliac vein, this is the interiliac anastomosis. We're not having you learn it, but it is just a cool term, so we wanted to share. <laughs> La uh, not last, but the last for the of the iliac branching. This is the caudal vein alongside that caudal artery. And last, but most certainly not least, we have the coccygeo mesenteric vein. Look at that. <laughs> In all called. of its glory. <laughs> What's that? Also called. Also called the caudal mesenteric vein. But the other term is much better. <laughs> but the other term is, it just sounds cooler. So use that one. Um, either one's fine though, they're acceptable. Um, so with that, that is a walkthrough of the pigeon circ and digestive system. Uh, take care everyone, see you in lab.